So now that we've talked about derivatives for vector-valued functions, we should, of course, um, talk about derivative rules, right? I mean, it's a, like an entire chapter back in Calc 1. Uh, so what can we say about derivative rules for vector-valued functions? Well, one, uh, sum and difference rules work, right? So if I want to take the derivative with respect to t of, say, r of t, plus or minus s of t. It's exactly what you would expect. Just r prime plus or minus s prime. Okay. And if you are taking the derivative of a scalar multiple, you can pull out the scalar. All right, so it'll be c times the derivative of r, as you might expect, okay? Um, now, that's for a constant scalar multiple. We could also have a variable scalar multiple, right? Um, a real valued, you know, we can think of real as really just meaning like scalar valued, right? Um, so this scalar here, you know, that's a constant, c is a constant, uh, but we could also have a scalar valued function, a real valued function f of t times r of t. And, and so the scalar multiplication is what you would expect, right? Each of the components in r of t gets multiplied by f of t. And since we take the derivative term by term, you have the regular product rule on each term, and you can kind of work out the details. In fact, maybe we will work out those details that you're going to get, well, the derivative of f times r plus f times the derivative of r, just as you probably expect, right? But we're not done. That's not the only product that we can talk about in the context of vector-valued functions, right? We can also take the derivative of a dot product, oops, not r of s, r of t, so r of t dotted with s of t. And the product rule works there too. Okay, you're going to get r prime of t dotted with s of t plus r of t dotted with s prime. Okay, oh, and there's one more product. We can also do a cross product. R of t crossed with s of t. Now, here you have to be a little bit careful. Um, in, in this is sort of dependent on your habits when it comes to writing out the, um, the derivative, the product rule for derivatives. Um, so I try to be, you know, all the way from calc 1 and all the way through. Um, I try to be consistent on always following the pattern of derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. Uh, some people like to always kind of put the derivative as the second term in the product, things like that. Um, but you have to pay attention with cross product, right? Because order matters for the cross product. If I change the order of multiplication, right, I'm going to be off by a minus sign. So here, if you keep that pattern, you'll actually be okay. So it'll be r prime crossed with s plus r crossed with s prime. Okay. Uh, and lastly, um, you can also deal with chain rule, right? Um, so you can take a vector valued function and compose it with a scalar valued function. So you can think of that as a change of parameterization if you like. And you can take the derivative and chain rule is going to work sort of the way you would expect it to, right? Um, you're going to get r prime evaluated at f of t, so derivative of r multiplied by the derivative of f. Now because that derivative of f is a scalar multiple, we tend to write it out front, right? We tend to put our scalar multiples out front. Um, so we can write it like that. Now, all of these derivative rules, they, they 
all follow from the derivative rules that you learned way back in chapter two, um, plus the, this theorem that says when you take the derivative of a vector valued function, you are just taking the derivative of each component, right? Um, so for example, if you think about, you know, say the third one, right? So if, if R of T is, let's say, um, X of T, Y of T, right, then, then F of T, R of T is going to be F of T, X of T, F of T, Y of T. And so when you take the derivative, of this thing, well, each, you know, we take the derivative of this and we take the derivative of that and each of these are just, it's just regular products of real valued functions, right? So it's sort of standard product rule being applied on the inside. So we have f prime of t times x of t plus f of t times x prime. And then we have f prime of t y of t plus f of t times y prime. And we split this up into a sum of two vectors, right? We're going to do this f prime of t, x of t, and then f prime of t, y of t, added to f of t, x prime of t, f of t, y prime of t. And now notice that f prime is a constant scalar multiple here. f of t is a constant scalar multiple there. And so you can factor those out. And of course, this is r of t, like we see here. And this is r prime, as you see here, okay? Um, the, the other two product rules uh, follow basically the same procedure, you know, with possibly slightly more detail, right? Because the dot product is slightly more complicated than a scalar multiple, and the cross product is definitely more complicated than the dot product. So, you know, each of these is going to be kind of the same idea with you know, a few more steps in the calculation, right? Um, the chain rule one is pretty straightforward. Again, it's just going to be the normal chain rule applied to each component in the vector valued function, and you'll see this one followed as well.